Lee Remick's life may have come to an untimely end, but throughout her life and career, she proved time and time again she had what it took to be a prolific Hollywood actress. And along the way, she earned a great deal of respect from her peers as well. In this video, we'll take a look at Lee Remick's life. And the Oscar goes to... Betty Davis was honored with her last Best Actress Oscar nod in 1962 for her role in the delightfully campy film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. After learning of the nomination, she decided she needed to size up her competition a bit. After seeing Lee Remick's remarkable portrayal of a young, seemingly put-together woman who tumbled into alcoholism in Days of Wine and Roses, Davis reportedly was heard saying Remick's performance astounded her. Apparently, she even went as far as to say if she ended up losing the Oscar, it would be okay with her. As history tells us, though, Anne Bancroft ended up taking home the Oscar for Best Actress for her incredible performance in The Miracle Worker. The competition was intense that year, but Remick arguably still deserved the coveted prize. Her work in Days of Wine and Roses is to this day heartbreaking. Lee Remick was in fact pretty experienced at breaking hearts. Just like her contemporary Betty Davis, she had the most mesmerizing eyes and the talent to go along with it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like. And subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around to learn how Lee Remick landed her first big breaks. Humble Beginnings Born to a wealthy family in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1935, Lee's father owned a department store and her mother was an actress. She had one older brother, Bruce, and her maternal great-grandmother, Eliza Duffield, was a preacher from England. Remick attended the Swoboda School of Dance and Manhattan's prestigious Hewitt School before enrolling at Barnard. She also honed her skills at the actor's studio in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. Remick was the quintessential all-American waspy beauty queen. Her wholesome girl-next-door persona made her a natural at modeling, which she did on the side while studying acting and dance in college. Remick's First Big Breaks In 1953, Remick made her Broadway debut in a production of Be Your Age. After making a bit of a name for herself doing some TV work, appearing in shows like Armstrong Circle Theater, Robert Montgomery Presents, and Playhouse 90, Remick finally landed her big breakthrough role in film at 21 when she played a precocious yet sexy cheerleader in the 1957 drama A Face in the Crowd, alongside the film's lead Andy Griffith. Seemingly overnight, Remick became a star, and she rapidly moved on to star in other high-profile movies. In 1959, she played a victim of sexual assault in Otto Preminger's Anatomy of a Murder. A year later, she appeared in the film Wild River, co-starring Montgomery Clift and Joe Van Fleet. That same year, she portrayed Miranda in a TV production of The Tempest alongside Richard Burton. In 1961, Remick received the top billing in Sanctuary alongside Eve Montand. On the small screen, she appeared in The Farmer's Daughter in 1962. Later in that year, she starred in Blake Edwards' suspense thriller Experiment in Terror. When Marilyn Monroe was fired during the production of the 1962 comedy Something's Got to Give, the studio announced their intentions of signing on Remick to replace her. Dean Martin, Monroe's co-star, however, refused to continue unless Monroe was hired back on. Eventually, the studio yielded, and Monroe was back on to complete the film. Remick ended up doing a thriller instead, 1963's The Running Man. She also appeared in the comedy The Wheeler Dealers, starring James Garner in the lead role. Back to Broadway In 1964, Remick appeared in the Broadway musical Anyone Can Whistle, which only ran for a week. Her performance is immortalized on the original cast recording. This began a lifelong friendship with the musical's songwriter and composer, Stephen Sondheim. She later appeared in the 1985 concert version of his musical, Follies. In 1965, Remick returned to film and starred in the drama Baby the Rain Must Fall with Steve McQueen. A year later, she starred in the Broadway production of Wait Until Dark, which was directed by Arthur Penn and co-starred Robert Duvall. The play was enormously successful, and Remick ended up being nominated for a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Drama. It was later adapted into a hugely successful film starring Audrey Hepburn. In 1967, she performed in Damn Yankees on TV and starred in the film No Way to Treat a Lady in 1968. She teamed up with Frank Sinatra and appeared in The Detective that year as well. And in 1969, she joined forces with James Coburn in the mystery film Hard Contract. Over the next several years, she delivered some of her most notable and career-defining performances on TV. Perhaps her most significant role during this decade was portraying Jenny Churchill in the 1974 miniseries Jenny, Lady Randolph Churchill. For her turn on this project, she took home a Golden Globe and was nominated for a Primetime Emmy. 
Remick's later years were just as active. During the later years of her acting career, she primarily worked in TV. She loved keeping busy and treasured acting as a craft over being a celebrity. Being a star was never something she actively sought. She simply loved her work and always put the full weight of her heart and soul into her work. In 1980, she played Margaret Sullivan in Haywire. That must have been some year because she also landed the lead role in Women's Room and supporting roles in The Competition and Tribute, the latter co-starring with Jack Lemmon. The remainder of the 80s proved quite fruitful. Remick appeared in Rearview Mirror, Tough Love, Of Pure Blood, and Nutcracker, Money, Madness, and Murder. Her last performances were in things like The Vision, Jesse, Bridge to Silence, and Around the World in 80 Days, all in the late 80s. Lee Remick's Death and Lasting Legacy In 1989, Remick learned she had kidney cancer. After briefly going into remission, her cancer came back with a vengeance, and in 1991, she died from the disease at age 55. She was survived by her loving family, consisting of her devoted second husband, British filmmaker Kip Gowans, and her two loving children from her first marriage, Kate and Matt Colleran. At her funeral, two of her favorite co-stars, Jack Lemmon and Gregory Peck, delivered emotional eulogies. Virtually no one could come to grips with the fact this vibrant and iconic actress had actually passed on. It seemed much too soon, and that's because it was. 55 is far too young for anyone to meet their end. Her legacy lives on. Regarding her chosen career path, Remick was once quoted as saying that on many occasions as an actress, she felt crazy, but the truth of the matter was she would have felt a lot crazier if she wasn't an actress. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of Lee Remick's films is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.